Hello my friends, today we will open and build the new mini brands Create. Now obviously these are heavily inspired from their competitor Miniverse and I have a lot to say about this series but I'm going to sprinkle my thoughts throughout the entire video. So let's get started. So the first thing we got in this ball is a UV light, which is shaped like one of those chef's hats. I know there's a specific name for it, but I don't remember exactly what's it called. It turns on and off. And I also have a lot to say about this specific item in the series, but more about that later. So here's the resin we got, some apricot gem, and then of course the little nozzle to help us spread it nicely. First impression about the resin, it looks a little bit bigger than what you get with Miniverse, and also the top part, the opening, is a lot wider. As you can see from the nozzle tip, usually Miniverse are really tiny. And then in the same pouch, we got a can of apricot halves. And the thing I like about this can the most is how realistic it looks. It's literally like a mini brands item from, you know, the regular series. Remember how I always said that mini brands should open and actually have items inside? Now this particular item does exactly that and it's very realistic just like the cans in the regular series the only thing i'm gonna say is that i wish the can was actually from a well-known brand rather than having just master shift printed on it and being a generic can okay so it seems like i cannot do that thing where i just pull the stuff out because there's a lot of things in just one pouch so i'm gonna have to modify my approach but either way in this pouch we got some sliced almonds and it seems like there's barely anything in there Okay, I know this is miniature stuff, but that looks more like real sesame seeds, right? Do you see the same thing I'm seeing? In the same pouch, we have a MasterChef branded little cake stand, a little plate, and one of those cake server utensils. So the third pouch comes with this little MasterChef placemat. And I'm really glad that they used this piece of cardboard to actually prevent it from bending. We know that Miniverse, for example, just, you know, puts these in there and then sometimes you get a bent one. So I guess for the placemat, the point goes to mini brands. In the same pouch, we got our collector's guide and one side has instructions on how to put your miniature together, while the other side is actually the collector's guide with all the miniatures available in the series. There's three things I want to mention about this series or the collector's guide. First of all, there's 11 minis in total to collect. Second of all, there's only one rare item in the entire series and it's this delicious looking apple pie. I really wonder how hard it is to find this one. And the third thing I wanted to mention that's different from Miniverse is they give you this QR code which takes you to the real life recipe of this miniature. And I think that's a really nice touch. It definitely gives me ideas about the videos I can do in the future where I can open one of these, make it and then try to make it in real life. And then the last thing in this paper pouch is a pamphlet with some warnings and then also a little bit about the UV light. In the last pouch, we got a cheesecake and it comes in this little cardboard box. Again, branded MasterChef. Everything seems to be just MasterChef everywhere. And I'm going to say once again, I just wish these were actually brands that we are familiar with. So the cheesecake looks very, very similar to what we usually get with Miniverse. I do like, however, the fact that they created a flat bottom and then this top part is clearly different. It's a little bit more rounded. So it's just an extra step they took to make sure this looks as real as possible. And if I'm not mistaken, I think Miniverse just has it almost the same on both sides. Maybe the color differs a little bit, but don't take my word for it. I'm not 100% sure about that. In the same pouch, we got a fork and it looks to be a little bit longer than what we're used to from Miniverse. And then a pair of tweezers, which I think would work a little better than the ones we usually get from Miniverse. And yes, in this video, I'm probably going to compare them a lot because that's what's happening here. It's literally mini brands creating their version of Miniverse. It is their first time doing something like this so I'm gonna try to be gentle with them but at the same time they did have like a couple of years to learn from um let's just say the mistakes that Miniverse did with some of their series and some of their items but yeah more on that later okay so this is how they show us to make it but if you guys have been around here for a while you know that I'm not gonna try to make it exactly as they said we're gonna try something different we're gonna try to make it even better and the only thing that comes to mind is to actually make it like a frozen moment where one of the slices is already cut out and then we can make it kind of like levitate as if you're pulling it out and with ideas like these it does take a little little longer to make them so I might not open and create a lot of these in this particular video but rest assured there's gonna be more videos and I'm gonna open and collect all of them and of course each of the recipes will have my own unique twist on them okay so here I just wanted to put all our apricot slices on top so I can know exactly how much I need to cut for one slice because I want two slices of apricot fitting nicely on the one slice of cheesecake 
And of course, I'm going to use my trusty blade to get through this. Okay, one side of the slice is done. I'm working on the second one. The problem is I need to make sure the angle is correct. Otherwise, I might not meet with this other cut here and that's going to be a disaster. All right, so I just cut through. The angle was great. But now let's see. How does it look? You might have to clean it up a little bit, but let's see. Oh, that's pretty good. It kind of looks like cheese, doesn't it? <laughs> it does look exactly like cheese, like a wheel of cheese. Let me clean it up real quick. I think I might need like a file for this just to make sure it's all perfect. So after a little bit of sanding, this is what I got. I think it looks a lot better and it still fits perfectly in there, as you can see. So what I want to do is something like this, where the cheesecake is kind of like here, maybe. Or should I put it here? I guess we could do it here too and just let some of that resin drip over here and stick it to it. But for that, I also want to use this little thingy. And as you can see, problem is it's way too long. If we put it like this, it's not going to look that great. Should we try like this? In a way, I wish this was a live video so I can get real time answers and advice from you guys. But for now, I'm just going to have to try and read your mind and I think you would go with something like this. So yeah, let's do it. Let's go for it. The worst that can happen is we fail and we learn something new, which at the end of the day will not be a failure because we learned something new. I think first thing I'm going to do is just make sure this slice is glued to this spatula thingy. Let's see what we're working with in terms of resin. Okay. Does this have to be popped off? Let's see how easy it comes off. Oh, very easy. Very, very nice, actually. That's an extra point for mini brands. Honestly, I don't even know if I want to use the nozzle because we just need a little bit. So we're going to go the toothpick route. My hand is a little bit shaky today. Okay, I think that's good. What, did you guys think I'm going to use their light? I have a few things to say about that light. It's um, first of all, I think it's really weak. So yeah, I'm going to I'm going to tell you more about it in a bit. I think it will look great if it's angled a little bit like this. And that would also help us when we pour the resin. So let's go with this version. But for that, I'm going to need to add the nozzle tip because this time we're going to pour our resin. And we need to be really careful and quick for this to work. So let's see. Well, where's the resin? No, oh, come on, mini brands. Don't tell me you didn't learn the lesson from Miniverse. All right, this is not a good sign. I shaked it a few times to make sure it comes out. Let's see if that worked. All right, I think that looks pretty good. We achieved the result we wanted. It's a little bit thick there, but I think once we add the peaches and every, well, apricots, once we add the apricots and everything, it will cover part of it. So next thing that tells us to do is to add the sliced almonds here and then put the resin on top. But I think we will just end up moving all the sliced almonds around if we do that. So I'm going to modify that step a little bit and just brush some resin on top of the cheesecake. And then we're going to add the sliced almonds. You just need to always make sure I don't forget about this top slice. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Now for our almonds, or as I like to call them, sesame seeds. And this over here, you should only use two thirds of the almonds. So I'm gonna try my best to estimate that. Okay, I think that's pretty much it. I don't want to overuse these and then, you know, not have enough. Now, the good part about adding resin like I did is that now you can move the almond slices around to make it look exactly as you wish. And then finally, we're going to cure all that in place with our UV light. All right, now I want to add another layer of resin. And we're going to spread it around. And of course, after that, we're going to add our apricot slices. Well, I just realized I should probably turn them the other way because I want this part to be the face. So then I want these to all, you know, face this way. That is much better. Now well, let's not forget about the top slice. That looks pretty good. And now we're going to put two of these uh, halves here in the middle. 
Hmm. I'm not particularly enjoying how these halves look here. Yeah, I guess it's okay. Yeah, it's good. It's good. Maybe we can move these around a little bit so that they fit nicely in there. And we're gonna add another slice over there. Something like that. I don't like the fact that this top part, the slices are turned that way, but I think if I turn them the other way, it's just gonna look weird because everything just goes like this, you know? Maybe we can get away with it, let's see. Yeah, that's not too bad. No one will tell. Okay. I am done messing with it. Let's set it with the UV light. Whatever we have resin here that's touching stuff, it's good because now it's gonna just hold it in place, at least for a little bit, because then we're gonna just brush a little bit more resin and then add the last few slices of almonds. All right, it's looking pretty good. Now let's brush some more resin on top of these. And I kind of want a line of resin dripping down from this top slice. Let's see if we can do that. Okay, something like that. Now we're gonna set it over here and we're gonna add our slices of almonds. And of course, we're not just gonna let them be there randomly. We're gonna move them around a little bit and place them nicely. Okay, I think that's pretty much it. Let's put it down here and cure it with our UV light, not theirs. And we'll have a look at exactly how it turned out. All right, you guys, I present to you my version of the almond and apricot cheesecake from the mini brands create. Let me know in the comments your honest opinion. I believe that maybe I should have gone a little bit easier on the apricot slices. Maybe a little less of them would have been good. Also, on the other sides of the slice, I could probably add at least one more drop of that apricot jam dripping down. But you know what? I can fix that part. I can add it right now. Okay, well, that's a little better, right? Especially from this angle. It looks so much better. Anyway, I'm gonna put this on the stand, put it to the side, clean my set, and we're gonna move on to the next one. Okay, before we move on, let's talk a little bit about this uh, UV light that they provide in each ball that contains resin, of course. First of all, this thing does not open and you cannot replace the batteries or charge them for that matter, which means that once the batteries are out, that's it. There's really not much use for this. I mean, you can display it, but after you open a few of these, you're gonna have a lot and then what are you gonna do with them you know they say here that the uv light has about two hours of working time and then on the collector's guide they say that the miniature we just made takes about five to ten minutes to cure using their light now i'm really glad they mentioned here they can also leave it in the sun for 10 to 20 minutes but regarding the light it is definitely not very strong but that's not the main problem i'm kind of conflicted because i appreciate the fact that they you know went the distance and included one of these because miniverse does not offer you a uv light they just tell you to leave it in the sun but at the same time the the fact that you cannot recharge it or replace the batteries just feels like a very big waste. I think they could have used the money to maybe give us a little bit more ingredients. For example, in here we just have three extra slices of apricots and barely any sliced almonds. And here's what I think they should have done. First, eliminate this from each capsule and use whatever money you saved to actually give us a little bit more ingredients so that we can play around, we can have leftovers and make our own creations. Or even if you didn't want to give us extra ingredients, eliminating this would have probably reduced the cost of the entire capsule. So that would have still been a net benefit for us. The other option would have been to just redesign these, make them rechargeable, and then sell them on the side. Because a lot of us are already invested in the miniverse, and if you create a lot of them, chances are you have your own UV light, whether it's a beast like this one or just a smaller one. It just seems to me that they really didn't think this through well enough. I mean, again, you buy multiple of these, you get multiple of these, they run out. What are you supposed to do with them? Just, just display them like this. But again, this is their first try on these types of miniatures and I'm guessing they just, you know, rushed a little bit and tried to gain a sort of advantage over miniverse because they do not offer you the UV light. Yeah, either way, enough talk about this. I'm curious to see or hear what your opinions are. So please drop me a comment and let me know. Well, here's another one of those UV lights, which means that whatever we have in here is with resin. 
Well, I guess it's pretty obvious now what we're gonna make next. Then we have the usual warning stuff. And I was just saying I'm glad they put this cardboard thing so it doesn't bend. Yeah, seems like that didn't work. So I guess Miniverse knew a thing or two when they just threw these in there, not worrying about them bending or not. Not even a uh, thick piece of cardboard helped this one. In this pouch, we got some green onions. I just noticed that the quality of this paper packaging is not that great. It's a little bit pixelated. We also got another pair of tongs and then a pair of chopsticks that are actually all one piece. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I thought we can break them apart or something, but minus a point because the miniverse chopsticks actually are, you know, two different chopsticks. Yeah, they don't come glued together like that. All right, we got the same type of uh, cake stand, as I like to call it, but I guess it's just like a presentation type of stand thingy. And I just noticed this one is a little bit damaged, but not too bad. And this was the other thing in the pouch. Um, I don't know how you pronounce that. Is it chashu and boiled eggs? Yeah, I think it's pronounced chashu. Let's open this and see how they look. All right, here's the chashu, which I'm guessing it's pork belly maybe, or some type of pork product. And we got one, two, three and then this is the egg we got two halves in here so let's put that to the side and let's see what's in the final pouch we got a beautiful bowl for our ramen some resin aka broth and then a packet of ramen nori and noodles so let's open this and the green onion packet and see exactly what we're working with all right, so they didn't lie when they said green onion. The packet literally says green onion, not green onions. We literally got a little cluster of green onions. Here they are up close. Never mind. I just lost them. I really do not know where they went, so give me just a second. All right, I found it. Here's the green onion. It's looking a little bit odd. Not a big ramen. I mean, the classical real ramen. I'm not a big fan of that, but I guess this is how it's supposed to look. I mean, this is Master Chef, after all. They know what they're talking about, right? Here are the noodles, and it's literally just a clump of noodles. I thought it's going to be more like Miniverse, where it's... You know, you can customize it a little bit, you know, you can move them around, but nope, this is literally just a cluster of noodles. So yeah, you don't have many options with mini brands. That's what we learned so far. And then here are two pieces of nori. I honestly thought they're gonna add a little bit more texture, like maybe crumple them up a little bit, you know? If I do it, I'm gonna ruin it because it's, the material is of such a, I don't know, not consistency, um, texture, I guess. What would you call paper that has different texture? I guess texture, yeah. Anyway, I cannot crumple it. I think I'm gonna ruin it if I do. So first I wanna see how they say we should make it. And then we're gonna think a little bit to see if we can do something different. And while I think about this, I'm just gonna clean the set a little bit. Okay, so I went through my Miniverse extras and here's the deal. I was initially thinking I could use these noodles, but that's not gonna work because the proportions are just not right. I mean, these noodles are way too thick compared to the pork or the eggs, but we can definitely use some of these pieces of Naruto. We could also technically use these eggs because they're almost exactly the same size. And to be honest, these eggs from Miniverse look a little bit more authentic because the outer color should technically look like that. Not like this. I do however think that many brands got the yolk part correct. And then maybe we can also use this broth spoon from Miniverse, the chopsticks from Miniverse, because they're not actually stuck together, and some of these sliced almonds that look exactly like sesame seeds. So first I just wanna see real quick how everything will fit together. That looks pretty good. I think Chef Gordon Ramsay would actually be impressed. Now we're gonna take some of these things out. We're gonna change the position of the meat. I don't like how everything is kind of moving, especially the noodles. So I think I'm gonna pull up a little bit of resin and then stick things in as we go so that they don't move around and mess everything up. And then we're gonna, you know, keep adding and keep building on top of that. So I'm gonna take both of these out. I'll just leave the nori in there. So let's open our resin. I have a feeling we're not gonna have a lot, so let's use every little bit. So now once we set it in place, the nori and the noodles should just stay there. 
Alright, that's looking beautiful. Now let's start building on it. We're gonna stick the other piece of meat over here. Alright, so far so good. Now, like I said, I'm a little bit worried we might not have enough resin, so I'm going to use just a thin layer to brush on these noodles so that if we end up not having enough, we're going to be still good because it's going to look okay. Now, let's put a spoon over here just for guidance. We're going to probably have it something like this, but for now, I just want to make sure, you know, I don't put something else in that place. And we're going to use the miniverse eggs in here. Now the Naruto will go over here. I think it's actually called Naruto Kami or Naruto Kami, something like that. And then the green onions will be here a little bit to the side. So before we blast it with the UV light, I'm just gonna add a little bit of resin to the spoon and hold it like this over here. Okay, I think so far it's looking great, but hear me out, we're gonna do something crazy. I saved this one piece of meat on purpose because we're gonna grab it with the chopsticks, the ones from Miniverse. So it's gonna be something like this and we're gonna secure them in place using some resin. Now this other side. Now we're gonna add just a little bit of resin to this broth spoon and then a couple of sesame seeds that are a little bit too big but I think it's gonna look okay. We just want to have a little bit of different you know texture in there not just the broth or should I say just a little bit of different color. Now I'm gonna add another drop of resin and maybe another one. We're gonna leave it here for just a second. Now here's where the crazy part starts because I wanna get some broth on the meat. Okay, kind of like that. And we're gonna get our UV light ready. Dip it, pull it out, dip it again, pull it out and... Well, I didn't imagine it exactly like this. It kind of created a little bit of a ripple there because I kept moving it as I was curing, but I don't think it looks too bad. It's almost like it's in motion. So yeah, anyway, let's turn it on this other side and just add a little bit more resin so that, you know, it looks all the same. Maybe we can try to fix part of that. Okay. Well, that looks a little better. Now what we have to do is add more of that broth to the bowl, which is kind of tricky because I covered most of the noodles. I'm just adding a few drops at a time and kind of like swishing it around that will work. We definitely need to add some more here on this side. Okay, I think I fiddled enough with it. Let's cure it in place with the UV light. Okay, here's how it turned out pretty good. Now if you want to be a little bit extra, you can go ahead and grab one of these white sharpies. I do have some orange acrylic paint and I want to paint this part here, but I'm afraid that if I'm going to do it orange, this is too thick and it's just going to, it's just not going to look good. So we're just going to use this white sharpie. I really wish I had one of these sharpies that is orange, but I do not. So yeah, I'm afraid of using this. We're going to put it to the side and we're just going to use the white.
And my dear friends, here's the final result, my version of the pork belly ramen. There's only one thing I wish it was different, that piece of pork belly between the chopsticks. I just wish that was a little higher and, you know, it would have looked like there's a small stream of that broth dripping down. But other than that, I think it looks pretty good. I'm quite proud of this one. I'm curious to hear what you think about it. So please let me know in the comments. Now, I'm going to clean my set real quick and there's something I need to ask you. On this collector's guide, there's nine Nine more items for me to find and build but the problem is I am running out of ideas of how I can make these different. At the same time I would really like for your ideas to be part of the next video or you know the next few videos I'm gonna do on these so pick one two three or all of them from this collector's guide and let me know in the comments how do you think I could make it differently and you can leave multiple ideas if for example you pick one of them like the cherry chocolate cake or something and you have two or three ideas of how I can make that differently please put all of those in there I will go through all the comments and next time I'm gonna open some mini brands create I will choose some of your ideas to create those differently or maybe I'm gonna choose one idea from here one idea from there and mash them up together to create something unique and spectacular. So now we're gonna stop here. I really wanted this video to be more of a test run and kind of like a review so we can see exactly what we're working with and what mini brands create are all about. Oh, that was a lot of words. I hope it made sense because I'm not gonna repeat that part. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. I'm really looking forward to reading your comments. I wanna thank you in advance for all the likes in the comments and for being subscribed or for subscribing after seeing this video. Now, as usual, you guys stay golden Keep on shining until the next video. Bye bye.